My name is Mandeep Singh. I'm founder of Mandeep's.com. Uh, we're one of the vendors in DNA ecosystem. Uh, my contact information is up there. Uh, it's also on the last slide. So feel free to note it down if, uh, if you had a question, shoot me an email. I want to start by thanking our sponsor for this, this year's conference. So the slide up there. Thanks. Uh, we can't have these beautiful conferences without their support. So let's get started. I believe it's a little bit cut off, but uh, we'll try and manage. All right. So before we get started, uh, I'm assuming. <laughs> yeah, it's it's uh, the tilt, um, the way they set it up. That's fine. So we obviously have some interest in using DNSS. If I'm assuming for here. So just by a quick raise of your hands. Has anybody used DNA as a SaaS platform before? Cool. All right. Let's change topic a little bit. DNN is extremely good at certain things, but I'm going to talk about the other stuff today, and that is where does it suck or what is the pain point. So just very quickly, if you have one that you think would make DNN totally cool or something that DNN needs to improve on. Anybody? Speed, so performance. Okay. So DNN is totally awesome. We don't need anything changed, right? Okay, cool. Now I agree. So in about 15 years that I've been using DNN, I have not seen a single project that. I don't know why me. There. That my. Uh, my team or I have not been able to use DNN to leverage and take care of that project. I mean, it's an extremely capable web application framework. It's extensible. So if you don't have something, build it. You know, that's uh, really totally awesome. Um, it is an awesome theming engine. So that takes you off your front end. You know, we, there's not have been a single design that somebody threw at us and we couldn't do it in DNN. So that speaks for itself. Got security built in, and that's you know authorization, authentication, a whole lot of stuff, and you know caching, URL rewriting, SEO. So everything that you need a great web application framework to have, it does, including API. When we look at from a SaaS perspective, uh, it's multi-tenant, you know, single code base. You got a bunch of portals, super cool, uh, multiple sites. But let's look at the other side of it, the shortcomings. So one of the shortcomings, if you're using DNN as a SaaS platform, is there's no database isolation. You got maybe 1,000 sites, but they're all in the same database. So that's one thing we could wish could have been different. Unfortunately, that's the way it is. There's no quick fix or way around it. Um, it's totally, totally coupled with the, the way those portals work. In certain SaaS projects, it'd be cool if we could have each different site use a different database, but run off a single code base. Um, unfortunately, that's not possible uh, with DNN, but Having said that, absolutely. So you could definitely have your custom extensions talking to different database for each site, yeah. but the core yeah. itself no, 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 is totally coupled. That, so yes. Cool. All right. So my pain point, or, or what I consider um, <laughs> something that would have been different, it's DNN. It's bloated, whether we like it or not like it. It is bloated, uh, and it's tightly coupled. Uh, whatever we looked in the last slide, it's awesome, great web application framework, but it comes with a front end that's totally bloated and tightly coupled. It's extremely hard to separate the two. Um, if you're building, uh, using DNA as a platform SaaS and you want to do everything custom. Uh, so that's what we're going to try to do today. We're going to see how we can go ahead and clean DNA up totally so we have an installation that is not uh, kind of forced upon us. Uh, it's, it's basically, I only want what I ask for. Uh, so as you mentioned, uh, mentioned, performance is one of the biggest reasons uh, why we don't want that bloatness. And uh, performance is a feature. Uh, I mean, it's, it's, it's that bad that now if, if your site is not performing, the SEO rankings go right down. Right? So it's not even a question of uh, it's nice to have, it's, it's must have. Uh, it's a designer nightmare. If, if you have, um, and we're getting more and more front-end tools, right? We got all the JavaScript frameworks and everything. Um, 
it's a pain for de designers to come in and start developing on top of DNN when there are 20, 30, 40, 50, and I'm not exaggerating, existing JavaScripts and style sheets being loaded. Now they have to figure out how to overwrite them and how to mitigate around them. There's really no easy ways to just get rid of them. So that's what we're going to try to do today. And that's resource intensive. I mean, this is uh, primarily important if you're doing a SaaS project. You know, the whole idea you're doing SaaS is because you're trying to scale it. All right. So even if uh, if it's not a big consideration on a single project, bandwidth becomes a huge deal when you're talking about thousands and thousands of sites and thousands and thousands of users, and you're loading this unnecessary stuff that doesn't need to be there. I mean, of course, performance is one thing, but resources become the second thing. The other problem shortcoming I see is with the single code base, and this is a pro and con. I mean, uh, so you have to kind of live with that single code base is totally awesome, and we're not going to go why. Uh, but the, 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 the con of that is you get one of your sites hacked. You got every single site hacked. So keep that in mind if you're building a SaaS platform on DNN uh, because you have a single database and single code base. All right, so uh, the other thing, and this is, this is my... I think the only thing in the DNN web application framework that I totally cannot rely on 100% is the scheduler. Anybody else feels that? Yes. Okay. You can yes. <laughs> although, although it has improved tremendously over the years, but it's still one piece, one aspect where I wouldn't put a mission critical application on it. So, yeah. so the, these are my shortcomings. I'm going to try and see how we can go ahead and address them. Now, obviously, this session is targeted towards customizing DNN. Um, to your advantage, to, to any degree you want. Wherever you feel like you don't need to do that particular point, obviously feel free to skip it. Uh, for example, if the scheduler works great for you, keep it. All right, so what I did is I just did some basic here. Uh, I, I installed a DNN 932, which is the latest official version right now, uh, site. And I deleted all the modules from the home page in the default site, so I just got a blank page. To load that blank page, it does 15 JavaScript requests and seven style sheet requests at the moment. Um, that's like 1.3 megabytes page size to load a blank page. Did you switch off the pop uh, Not yet. We'll get there. Okay. We'll get there. Um, the, the skin, uh, being there. This is default installation. You just installed it fresh. It's this is what happens. Just uh, out of the box. This just just out of the box. And, yes. um, I actually have, uh, an, at any point, this is, this, I want this to be an interactive session. You have a question, you want me to show something, ask me. Um, but I have this site here called Stock 932, uh, and I'll show that in a sec. We can take a look at that along. But it gets interesting. Now you take that same, same installation and you log in. The JavaScript request jumps up to 64 JavaScript request if you're logged in as an admin, um, and 22 style sheet requests. That's like 4.5 megabyte worth of resources just to show you a blank page if you're logged in. Now, again, this is all cool if your SaaS project is not asking for people to log in as an admin. But if you're giving that admin capability, then I think this is a big performance hit and downside that should be addressed. Now, this is out of the box. If you just turn the CRM on, things get better. Client resource management, put the CRM on with minification, and from 22 requests, we're down to six requests. So that's nice, uh, less than a megabyte. And uh, when you're logged in, you still got about 43 requests and still close to about four megabytes. So still a lot of room for improvement there. All right. So why is this a problem? If you're writing a SaaS project, you want to give a modern UI to your end customers to manage this. This is a nightmare for your front-end developers. Even though it got minified and it got 60-some resources got combined into five, that's, <laughs> that's still a hell of a job for a developer to find a conflict if there is one occurring across 86 different resources, the one you didn't ask for the one you don't need. <laughs> They're just kind of forced upon you. Now, of course, DNN needs them to run various things. So the idea here is with this, you are modifying the, pro the DNN platform. Well, when I say modified, we're not going to modify core and throughout this 
presentation. We're going to try to do things the, the way it needs to be done. Uh, we're trying to get to a clean level, clean slate of DNN installation so we can start our development. You know, like I said, it's a, it's a nightmare to override, learn, investigate, and troubleshoot across 86 different resources that are loaded out of, out of the box just because you're logged in. If you take a look at this, and let me do a quick demo here. Do you see, there we go. So that is a default DNN installation. And we can't really see, so let me bring it out here. And this is the request with the serum turned on. So not a whole lot of stuff still there. But as soon as you logged in, it's a different story altogether. Shouldn't you, you do this, these tests with a different skin? But this is just a skin that is built by a DNN. So, so you should do this test without... Absolutely. That's what we're going to do next. That is exactly what we're going to do. Uh, Absolutely. No, you're right. That's exactly what we're going to do. So as you can see, now there's still 51 requests with Serum turned on and about pretty big load of... Uh, and, and we don't want to look at just... All we just probably want to just look at JS and CSS uh, because everything else is content driven. So, like he said, all of this is probably coming from the theme, uh, and that's why DNN theme is pivotal uh, when you're doing your own custom open. But when you're logged in, it's not the theme; it's the control panel that's the culprit. About 40 to 50 JavaScript requests are coming from that control panel for every single option that you have in that persona bar. It's loading one or more JavaScripts to go along with it. So every single persona bar extension that we install introduces more JavaScript because it's, it's designed in architecture to be separated. But that's where the nightmare comes when you log in. All those, out of the 86 requests, I would say 55 are coming from the control panel. So DNN theme is extremely important for the front end. And then control panel becomes extremely important if you want to have authenticated users logged in, and you want to make sure that you have some control over that. I have a question. I haven't looked at it. Um, the, those, those individual scripts that are coming from the persona bar, are they all loaded all at once when the persona bar loads, or are they loaded when you choose an, a specific view in it? Or so they're, they're, the ones that I've documented here, they're just loaded just because I'm logged in. Okay. I haven't clicked or interacted with the persona bar at all. So if you see, it's kind of hard to see here. I got, let's see. I got extension.js, event emitters.js, menu I can load or JS, DOM ready JS, and all this stuff just comes in when persona bars there. And there's, uh, I believe right now we got uh, 51, uh, no, 25 requests. And this is after, after turning on CRM. We take CRM out, this jumps to 50, some requests. Uh, so all these requests are not even uh, probably going through the CRM. Uh, it's just the page. Yeah, yeah. And, and this is without any interaction with the persona bar. It's just there. All right, let's go back. So it's, what, what's clear is if you really want to clean it up, you've got to clean the theme up and you've got to clean the control panel up. So that's, that's, that's what it is. Uh, so one thing you want to do is start with a Minimum DNN install. Does anybody know here what I can take out of DNN and still not break it? Like all the modules and stuff. Is there a module that DNN requires where I can take everything out? I think I most of it. I don't know. DNN and login authentication. So those are actually, um, you could actually take them out because DNN handles uh, login internally. If you put control question mark equals login, it will, even if there's a module. It will still give you a login UI, so you can go in and log in. So you could actually take those out. The only thing you need to install a DNN is you have to have a theme. So you cannot run DNN without theme. In, in, the, in the core theme, if you're using, the one that comes with DNN, it has a dependency on DDR menu because it wants to render the menu. So, so then we need the DDR menu module. And you have to have some kind of control panel. These are the only required dependencies. Uh, again, the two that we're going to target, the theme and the control panel. 
let me go ahead and bring something here into the view. You don't need a menu uh, loading. All the time in your skin, you can have a skin without the menu. Well, you can also have a, a, a skin with, with a different interface to, to render menu than the DDR as, as well. So here I have a, a stock DNA 9 through 2. And what I basically did is I went in there to the install folder, and I got rid of every single thing that I saw there. Before, creating Before it started crashing. <laughs> so you could get rid of everything, like I said. From there, you don't need anything. So there's 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 a bunch of JavaScript libraries there. Um, obviously, if your project SAS project is going to depend on jQuery, then by all means keep it, right? But if it doesn't, why do you need jQuery UI loaded, right? Why do you need to have jQuery migrate if if you've already cached up and you're using the latest version of jQuery? Uh, so you know there's tons of tons of modules here that get installed, and mostly they're because of Persona Bar. Uh, and other modules, but if you if you're not using them in your SAS project, there's no need for it to be there. So just get rid of it to begin with. The only thing that you need to keep just to have a, a DNN installation that will install is a persona bar. So that would be you can't see here anyways. I can hardly see. So uh, in the HTML module, right? Because the default template. That is. That is that is <laughs> that is actually an interesting observation because I got rid of it and my site was okay. Yeah, I don't know how that happened. I will I will, I will demonstrate that. I got rid of the HTML module and the uh, default homepage renders fine. I don't know how that's possible. It's inserted, I think, in the tables. Unless it's going in a footer yeah, yeah. and header, but of what module? <laughs> it still doesn't make sense. But we'll see. We'll do a demo right now. So you need to keep the persona bar. Uh, and ultimately, where I'm going with this, if you're doing your own SaaS platform, you need to replace with your own persona bar or your own control panel. But that is the minimum required component. And then obviously, from the, from the theme, just keep the, uh, from the module, keep the DDR menu. And from the, from the skins, keep the skin. And ultimately, we're going to replace this and see how that goes. So what I did is I created this another package where I simply just got rid of everything. And let's look at that. Well, that's, that is that is really interesting. The only thing I got there is the persona bar and the DDR menu. There's no HTML module, but it worked. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and install a clean installation based on this install file right now. And we'll, we'll do that in a second. But let's go ahead. That. Yeah, so this is basically saying we need the theme and the control panel. So when I do that, uh, how many here use NV Quick Site to yeah. set up sites? Cool. So I'm going to go ahead and try to do that really quick and get us a new installation of DNN right here. And I'm going to choose the install file that I just demonstrated. I can't see a thing. <laughs> All right, I'm just going to type here Queen 932. So it should be just a couple minutes here. So as uh, the gentleman here for, you know, mentioned, it's lot, half the stuff is coming from your thing. So if you get a good theme, you, you got a solid uh, base to begin with. And that is for front end. But for back end, you have to also worry about the control panel because you got all the stuff uh, coming in that in, you don't need. In essence, it's, it's, it's uh, what, what the installation, normal installation package wants to do is a mix of both. Uh, they want to give a new user a good impression what DNN as a blank install can do for you. Sure. And therefore, there are the themes and the, the uh, images and all the kind of stuff. That's one audience that's addressed. Sure. But if you are a developer and using it as a framework, you like to get rid of all But you stuff. still have a problem there, and th that's a different topic as it's about improving the default theme and so forth, right? Yeah. I mean, in, in today's world, if you if you start with a CMS that is, takes five megabyte of resources to run up a blank page, that needs some some addressing. Yeah, I think I don't know what normal users are or first time users, but they install it, and when I install DNN, 
15 years back for the first time, I really liked the fact that there, are, there was theming inside that I could manipulate the design without changing the data that was behind it. That impressed me at that point. Absolutely. Time. Yep. No, absolutely. Uh, and, and, and we're, as we get into this, it's going to get more and more about deciding do I really need to do this? Yeah. Do so I need to get rid of jQuery? Uh, so, so, se second thing, Dr. CMS platform where maintenance administrative work is in the same place as the final product itself, which is, which is an advantage. But if I work with other systems like WordPress or Joomla, you have the website and you have the ad admin packages in a completely different way. And that separation can make the final website much cleaner. Sure. Compared to what and, and that might be the it. and that might be your goal for your next SaaS project. So our idea is to see, can we do that okay, with great, DNA? Great. We don't need it to be so tightly coupled. No, yeah. Right, yeah. So we're going to try and separate that layers out. Uh, as a matter of fact, I have another session on DNA as a headless CMS, yeah, which, uh, which totally aims to do that, that you totally take the front end out, don't ever bother using it. Use no. it as a back end to run your site. Just as an engine. Correct. Yeah. So great. almost done here, I would say a couple of more I seconds. And to keep the, the yes, I appreciate time. that. Yeah. Thank you. We also did that ourselves, and we created APIs to talk to the DNN API. Yeah, to you know, because we just don't realize the amount of functionality DNN has in the back end. It's enormous. And I try to just do the, the basic authentication, authorization, security rules, and web API and from files. scratch. <laughs> it's, 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 so so uh, DNN gives us a lot uh, to, to, to use as a web application framework. All right, so there's, there's our side. So, whoa, you're absolutely right. Because I was testing with blank page, I didn't, I didn't realize that I don't need an HTML module. Because <laughs> my bench works was just against a blank page, you know, just trying to have a blank page up. It's and a big memory, because like we did, when I was at the Corp, we did some experimenting with this years ago, and, and that was the one that we found was like, oh wait, we need the HTML module. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, I, I, I'm trying to go as bare bone and clean. So I didn't even notice it. So I have the blank page to begin with. If, if, this, if I had installed HTML module, this would have your default DNN page on it because it would build it using HTML module. So there's, there's our page right there. And let's take a look at this. And this, this is minimal right now in terms of just the back end. I haven't done anything, still logged in here. I'm going to log out here and Time. This session goes on until 12.25. Okay, we got that. All right. So if you just look at this from, from, from a front, front end developer perspective, look at the source code there. Just to start off with, we got the DNN copyright. We got a bunch of different CSS, and this is coming from the theme. A lot of JavaScript coming. And my first goal was to make this clean. You see the amount of code there? And obviously, that's coming mostly from the theme, but there's other stuff. So let's go ahead and do that. The first thing we're going to do is clean the theme out. Uh, and this is super easy. Uh, you know, just get rid of every style sheet that you don't need. This, the framework is smart enough to detect if it's not there, it's not going to load it, including the default.css. So we've got rid of every single style sheet by simply just removing it. You can remove default.css, you can remove skin.css, you can remove the mytheme.css. So if you're, the name of your skin is, let's say, hello, you can remove the hello.css, it won't get loaded. So you can get rid of every CSS just by deleting it. Uh, and I just included a link there that explains what orders it gets loaded and so forth. So we'll, we'll go ahead and uh, kind of skip past that. And we'll do it, we can do a quick demo on that really quick. Next you want to just get rid of the copyright. Because I got rid of the UI, the control panel is gone. <laughs> So what I loaded was just the shell of the control panel. If you look at our theme, there's nothing in it. Because you have the shell, and then you got these extensions of persona bar, which is actually featuring each individual component. So let me show you what I'm talking about. So let me log back in. So there's my persona bar on the left, but there's nothing there. Great. Yeah. Right? I like that. 
I just got a shell, and the reason I got the shell because my DNN would install otherwise. It'll, 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 it'll error. It. In, in a minute or so, I'm going to get rid of the shell too. <laughs> so, uh, so the first thing you want to do is get rid of the copyright. And you, you can usually do this from admin US settings, but since I don't have that persona bar, I'm just going to run that script. It just changes the flag and the host settings, and we'll get rid of it. So the next thing you want to do is probably remove pop-ups, because out of the box, DNN has pop-ups enabled. Those pop-ups, uh, there's a JS file called popups.js that DNN needs to load. But that is dependent on jQuery UI, which is dependent on jQuery, which is dependent on jQuery Migrate. So out of the box, you get four JavaScripts and about 400, 500 kilobyte of resources just because the pop-ups were enabled. So you want to probably get rid of that. Uh, just enabled. It's, it's not used. And it's not used. No. And you didn't, it, it, well, it's used in the login. When you click on the login button, a pop-up comes up. Yeah. Uh, so that's the default behavior, and uh, you can just safely turn it off. Uh, the login will get redirected to another page. Uh, and if, like I said, you, you're not using uh, scheduler, disable it. There's not a whole lot going on a scheduler, obviously, unless you're using the site crawler uh, for crawling. But more importantly, we're working actually on a SaaS project, so that's how I got started. We're building our own scheduler. Uh, if this is going to be a, a, a project that's hosted on Azure, we're using the Azure Azure schedule task and so forth to run this. So I don't need Dean on scheduler. Uh, I have more flexibility. I know it's more reliable and so forth. So it's, it's easier to just go ahead and disable the scheduler um, versus uh, control panel. We're going to have to actually create our own control panel, a clean one, and kind of put it in, which we'll use as our uh, framework. So you, uh, the great thing about DNN, like I said, extensible, and it's absolutely configurable. So you can go ahead. Scheduler is also on a provider model. You can create your own scheduler and just switch it out. You don't have to use the one that comes. I believe um, Bogdan, DNN Sharp, has a scheduler component, uh, and it works kind of the same way. So let's say you don't like DNN. It's more than Yeah, you can swap it out and use theirs, or you can build one your own. Um, so we're going to go ahead and do this just by running these SQL queries and then simply deleting them. To save time, I already did this on a separate DNN installation, so I'm just going to show you instead of going there and doing it. Um, the next thing you want to do, or do, do you guys want me to step through the demo? Okay, I got enough. <laughs> all right, so the next thing you want to do, by doing this, I'm going to get rid of all the JavaScript in the front end, all the CSS in the front end. Uh, but when I log in, I'm then presented with the nightmare of 60 another requests from the control panel. So how do I get rid of that? So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of the shell. Um, and that's, uh, that's, that's super easy to do, even if you're not a, well, if you're getting to this level, you better be a developer. Because <laughs> if you're building a SaaS project and you're going to clean everything out, so, because uh, uh, a, a clean or shell <laughs> control panel is no good to anyone. Obviously, you're going to build on top of that to then reintroduce all the features you want in your SaaS platform. Uh, you could simply inherit from control uh, panel base and just compile that, and uh, that's it. That's good enough to get rid of the control panel and put a blank shell on it. After that, it's really up to you what you want to do from there. For example, you, could, you may want to build a UI that is like Wix.com. You don't want a control panel. You want inline editing and everything very fluid or something. Or you may want, like you said, you know, segregation between the front end and the back end. So it's really your call how you want to go ahead and do that. So this is what the code looks like. Simple project, create a simple class called control panel, inherited from control panel base, and I didn't do a thing, just compiled it. Um, can't see. I'm going to go ahead and change this to, so I see here, instead of extend mode, that'll make life easier. There we go. Okay, so I just added a ASCX called control panel, and that's the back end you're looking at it. That's it. Doing nothing. Doing nothing. So for, uh, for demonstration purposes and to save time, what I did is I cheated a little bit, and in your desktop modules and admin is your DNN persona bar that got installed, and under the user controls, there is your shell called persona bar control, 
container, sorry. I simply took my control.aspx, which I just built, renamed it to that same thing, and replaced it. Now, ideally, you wouldn't want to do that. You would want to actually change out your control panel with your own files. And that is, again, super simple to do. Uh, inside, uh, right there. So inside host settings, you have a setting called control panel, and you simply give it a path to your shell. That's it. So you could simply go update, put your file wherever you want into your own names, naming conventions and update that path, and you'll be done. But to save us time, uh, I simply came here, took the original one, made it, called it original, and put this one in. And this is nothing but what I showed you, blank one. Obviously, I also put the DLN in the bin folder to go with it, and that's all I did. And this, what, what this will do is give me a blank shell. All right, so this gets rid of all that 50, 60 JavaScript calls we have. So let me go ahead and switch to that one, the one that I already set it up. So this way I don't have to go execute each of these statements individually for this new one. This is my blank page. That's correct. Uh, hold on, I think we missed a slide. We talked about uh, yeah, we were talking about cleaning the uh, theme. Yeah. So you could get rid of all the, uh, the styles uh, by just deleting them. But most importantly, uh, in the default DNN theme, there are about a dozen skin objects, right, for login and all that stuff. Each one of these are loading their own JavaScript and CSS as the theme fit and necessary. So what I did is I created a clean theme just for the purpose of making a clean slate. and. Uh, how do you do that? So that is super simple. Just like how I created the control panel, you can just, instead of inheriting, uh, you don't even need to have a backend code. You can just take an ASCX, the home, home.aspx. Let me give it a demo of that. So let's go right here to websites, portals, default, skins. Um, now, here's my home.acx, clean. <laughs> I got rid of everything except for a control panel, which is required. You have to have a control panel on your theme. So I'm not including any skin objects. That doesn't mean you don't, you don't need to. Obviously, if you want to reuse something, put it in. But we're trying to use it as a blank slate up. Um, versus this, and I just went ahead and, and, and I kind of changed the home.asa so I didn't have to create a new theme. And, and obviously, when you're doing it, you're going to create a new theme, install it properly, and then do it that way. So after I, I changed the theme out, and I change the control panel a lot. This is what I see. This is my blank page now. Because I didn't put any menu, you don't see no menu there. There's nothing here. It's just blank. I'm trying to go as, as bearable and as possible on this install. If you could see the, uh, the source code now, uh, we have nothing on the top. There's no copyrights, nothing. Everything's gone. The only thing I have is uh, uh, some hidden inputs for ASP.NET Web Forms which is required, some JavaScript for ASP.NET, some JavaScript, again, for, to run the ASP.NET AJAX. There's three different calls going on, and then some hidden inputs for the view state. That's it. There's nothing in here that I can now get rid of and still have a DNN running. Uh, there's my content pane for my theme, and this is as clean as I can make it uh, in the front end. So this is Beerbun front end. Now, it doesn't end there. Because when you do log in, and here, uh, I don't have a login control, but I can still log in using control or login. I got rid of every single style sheet in DNN, so it looks ugly, of course. Uh, but it will still allow me to log in. By the way, this login control here calls about 15 different JavaScripts and style sheets as well, just to function. So if you're really doing everything uh, you know, from blank state, then you would probably not want to use that login control as well. Uh, you can create your own module and use that. So I'm going to log in here, and an interesting thing happens here is, even though I got rid of the persona bar, now I got DNN core to worry about because it's injecting its own scripts, the ones I don't want. Uh, so let's take a look here at the source code, and if you see right here, just by logging in, I got jQuery back in, I got a drag and drop back in. And I got a hover in 10 back in. So this is where I, I said DNN is tightly coupled. Now, uh, 
when you go in and edit mode DNN, you could take your module and drag it to a different pane. That is something, and that's why we have that drag and drop JS to, to kind of power that. But that is something that DNN is injecting via skin all times. So you have no say. It's always there. If you're logged in, you're an admin, or you can add content, you can uh, edit the page, it's going to be there. So that's a problem because I may not want to use their drag and drop. I may want to come up with my own way of how to add modules or remove modules or, or change the pane layout and so forth. Um, so we're going to look at how we can get rid of that uh, without modifying the core. That is coming straight from the core, and there's no configuration options for me to actually uh, have the core not injected, but we'll still look at a solution on how we can do that. Uh, so let's, let's, let's look at that, uh, and let's see if there's anything else here. Yeah, so there's also dncore.js that gets loaded on the front end. In my front end, I was able to get rid of everything by what I've shown so far, except dncore.js. So dncore.js is always there. Uh, there's no switch or flag for me to get rid of it. And then if you log in, then dn and drag drop js is always there. And because that's dependent on jQuery UI and jQuery and jQuery migrates, all those, and hover intent and all that stuff. So just for the drag and drop, again, the five, six frameworks get loaded. So how do we get rid of this? The only way to get rid of this so far that I found without touching the core or modifying the core is to create my own extension, a little bit, writing a little bit of my own code. And Persona Bar actually does that too. If you look at the existing implementation of Persona Bar, it kind of uh, kind of intervenes into the union core and say, hey, you're not going to load this file because I'm taking care of it or whatever it is. So back into our uh, development. What I did is I created a custom theme, and I, I wanted to handle this at a theme level because theme is shown in the front end and back end versus control panel, which would be just for the back end. So here's my custom theme. Just created a class, inherited from skin, nothing else. The only thing I'm doing here is I created two arrays, and I wrote a bunch of names of files that, for whatever reason, and when I did this, I, I didn't realize that you could actually just delete default as CSS and will never get loaded. Uh, but that's not true with DN core.js. You just cannot delete it. What's going to happen is going to start throwing 404. Can so, like what was that? Can you, just you could, but it's still a resource. Yeah. So, in your front end, a, a call is still made to load that JS, and that will still slow the page down. Uh, yeah, it, it will. It will. You're absolutely right. It will s save your front end developers from not having to worry about any conflicts or anything along those lines. But you still got those JavaScript calls, and Google will still penalize you. So you got 60 different requests going on your page. That's it's not fun. So what I did is I just created two areas with the files I don't want on the page, uh, and the page load I called some methods, and this is just like a trick. I basically go on. Uh, um, and find the control, which is client dependency head JS. So if you have serum enabled, that's where serum injects all the JS. So I go there and I say, if that JS is there, let's remove it. Okay. So I just wrote a little code here where I go through my uh, array, find every file that I want to get rid of. Uh, I check if it's, uh, if it's in the CSS, then I get rid of CSS. If it's in JS, I get rid of JS. Now you can improve this code. I wrote this literally in five minutes on airport. So uh, you can certainly improve this code. I mean, you could just look, create a method just for JS and just for CSS. I mean, I just put something hacked together, so I'm looking at everything. And you could definitely improve this code in terms of speed and performance. And you should, because this is going to get called a lot. It's part of your theme. But by doing this, I can now tell the end framework, hey, I don't want that file without modifying the core. So there could be any module within the end core somewhere trying to inject a file, and I can put a stop on it. It's like, no, I don't want it. Don't give it to me. So when I did that, um, and I installed um, this theme, uh, I was able to go down to zero on the back end and front end. And that gave me my uh, blank DNN slate, which still has the entire web application framework that is to my leverage, whether it's web API or just normal SDKs. But I get to decide what goes on the front end. So let's, uh, let's do a quick 
temu. So if you see this theme, home.asx, I modified it, and it's now inheriting, inheriting from my clean control panel.home. I just decided to throw it there, obviously, something I hacked together. Uh, but I'm not using now reference directly to skin. I'm referring, using the reference to the code I wrote, which actually goes on and takes all that stuff out. So when you go ahead and do that, you won't see any of those files. I believe uh, that's all I have for this presentation. Uh, questions? And you'd use a similar approach. It's it's you add a head, you add tags to the to the ASCX um, uh, skin, so you have to include the module, have to include the module in the ASCX skin, and you can mention there uh, remove from a head uh, this file and this uh, JavaScript. Uh, yeah, okay, cool. You, you yeah. No, even the core, like I said, even the control panel in the core does the same approach to get rid of some of the files, the thing, and the and thing. and that's the, that's the way to go. Yeah. yeah. So uh, even though it, uh, you know, when you, you have a default DNN that's loaded, you could literally rip out every single piece of functionality uh, right now without modifying the core. Great, great. Yes. Now, how do you uh, use this uh, main uh, uh, install? Mm -hmm. Then you are able to install your own modules and create the working Side. Absolutely. So remember, the goal of this presentation was to break it down to the bare minimum. What I can I get to the blank slate? You know, can I get to the core required components? Just the web forms code, just the Microsoft AJAX line. I don't want anything that that the end is going to put on top. But for your SaaS project, that may not make sense. Maybe you want to leverage the persona bar, and you want to still keep the UI to add pages and so forth, right? So you could just kind of choose the components you want to get rid of and keep, but Let's say if you were doing from blank slate up, there's nothing stopping me from writing my own UI to be able to add pages or add modules because all that code is still there. Just the UI disappeared. So I can still use the web, uh, I can still use the API to call, for example, prompt. In DNN3, I got, we got prompt added, right? So I can get rid of everything and just add prompt and still do everything as, as a backend admin if I want to. But the, the, the goal here and purpose here is if I wanted to create a Wix.com like SaaS project based on DNN. Can I do it? And the answer is yes. Uh, obviously, you're going to have to build it up. You're going to have to build the front end up. Well, we, we started on a mission, something similar to that. So that's where, that's where I had to dig into this. But uh, you're going to have to build your own front end up. But you can leverage the back end. You have, uh, if, if somebody were to replace, and that's the problem we have uh, right now, migrating DNN to .NET cores, it's an enormous amount of work to the amount of functionality that's in DNN to kind of write it from grounds up. It's an enormous task. So you want to you reuse that and you can slap a different front end on top of it. You're always looking at the result from the client view. Mm -hmm. That's what, what it's getting rendered. Uh, have you gone through the web config to see if things are loaded in memory that you can remove? So yes, I did. Uh, I, I it's kind of skipped in, and that was the first thing I did. I got rid of everything extra. So one of the things I wanted to do is I want to reduce the memory footprint of the site itself. Yeah. So I didn't load or even install any DLL that I did not need. Uh, with the scheduler, you can. That's one thing I want to rip off. You can't remove it from web.config. DNN will, will cry and crash. So it needs a scheduler. You can turn it off. So a quick way was to turn it off, or you can write your own blank scheduler and put it that in as a provider, just like we did with the control panel and everything, uh, and that works. Um, there's, there's not a whole lot more in there, uh, although I, I really didn't put 100% effort on it, that you can probably just remove and, and be okay with it, because it is the modules that when you install them, that they write to the web.config for their, for their uh, dependencies. Uh, because we didn't install anything that that is beyond bare minimum. I don't think there's anything in. Uh, yeah, but there could be something from the core modules that's in there. Because but, well, the core modules are also installable. Yeah. There's there's no such thing as core modules yeah. within the platform. Okay. So uh, when you look at an install file from DNN blank, it's 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 pretty much empty. 
There's, and there's nothing in the web that config. It's the actual, when the installation happens, that's when the DNN core entries get written, and then any module that's getting installed it will write as entries. Okay. Yeah. What about the solution to have two websites, mm -hmm. one for admins and one for anonymous visitors? Sure. And in the one for anonymous visitors, you would remove everything you don't need. Mm -hmm. The only problem is that you change the database. So in my solution, as you share the same database, mm -hmm. uh, what you suggest that uh, change the database would not work. But if you don't do that and only change the website part, mm -hmm. uh, that could be a well, workable so, solution. So uh, your backend tells you if somebody's logged in or not. And they also tell you what privileges they're logged in. So you can handle just by based on it. You don't have to worry about any of the config. Because uh, when, when let's, uh, let's say an anonymous user logs in, you know that's just anonymous, right? Yeah. Let's say anonymous, uh, let's say you're one of your users log into their site for whatever reason, let's, to add a blog post or something, right? You can tell that because you know what the user is and what privileges they have. But when an admin logs in, you know they're an admin. So now you can either redirect them to a different site if you want a completely different site or inject your dependencies. Or, or, give, or give them a, a second URL. Oh yeah, Login administration sure. Just like if you other. if you really want two separate sites, absolutely. Yeah. But let's say you just want to segregate it within the same size, then you can then at that time go ahead and inject your dependencies for their front end or editing experience. And that's exactly what currently DNM does. The persona bar uh, is uh, user aware based on what settings you have. It loads only those extensions. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Great session. Thank you very much. Thank you.